So welcome to uh, Linux Fest 2024. Uh, this is a uh, presentation, Dynamic Defense Open Source Solutions for Runtime Kernel Security by Swastik Anupam. Take it away. So uh, now I need to start, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, a uh, very good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you for choosing this track and this presentation. This is the first one uh, in this track. So I'll give a bit information about myself. So my name is Swastik Anupam. I am currently a first year undergrad student in Bachelor of Computer Science and Engineering from MIT University, Kolkata. And apart from uh, general studies, I'm more into quantum computing research and development, especially in the security side. So uh, basically, this topic which uh, we are going to discuss today. So I think my screen is uh, visible to all of you. So uh, how I would like to share something first, how I got idea of this uh, topic, like uh, for runtime kernel security as uh, while programming for quantum computers, we faced uh, an error when uh, when quantum computers uh, give you an outcome and it goes through a Linux box or basically we can say a backend uh, which converts it into usable data. That that time, if we have some security issues or something, we have to put that box uh, Linux box down, uh, which we call downtime, and then we have to uh, you know implement uh, security patches and updates which uh, which are required for. Uh, the proper functioning and the protocols, uh, security protocols to be precise. But uh, that causes a delay. And while uh, dealing with uh, a, a sharp deadline or timeline, we can uh, we cannot uh, consider delays of such kind, like two hour or four hour downtime. That's why uh, my, main, uh, my main concern was to come across a solution to this, like uh, how we can uh, move from, uh, you know, uh, putting uh, the servers to downtime and then uh, patching it with the new security updates to running, uh, to keep running it and, uh, you know, giving it uh, updates at the same time. So that uh, that's what we are going to discuss today in the topic, uh, dynamic defense. We are basically going to explore open source solutions uh, for the security of kernel at the uh, runtime level, not in uh, downtime. Like uh, our major focus will be how to, uh, you know, implement security protocols and patches while server is running then only to uh, prevent delay and uh, especially when deadlines or some critical operations in uh, zero trust architecture or critical architecture some operation is running at that time so we'll move with the basic uh, definition of kernel so what is kernel uh, so kernel acts as the main component of the uh, operating system it uh, Bridges basically it helps to connect uh, OS with uh, uh, different types of hardware and all. It is uh, the mediator between uh, the activities uh, which operating system which uh, we give command to operating system and operating system puts forward those through the kernel to the hardware. It acts as a bridge, and it also helps in uh, process coordination uh, because uh, most of the operating system are multitasking so like a hardware resources are shared from one process to another and the decision like which process should be given priority over the other is uh, basically done through the kernel and uh, it smoothly allocates system uh, resources and the major thing uh, which it does is while well, uh, it, it prevents deadlock like uh, if a resource is using a keyboard and suddenly we jump to another process or resource um, and then uh, it may happen that uh, deadlock can happen uh, while one uh, uh, you know while uh, one hardware is been used by the other process then uh, it can uh, um, cause problem uh, if we uh, suddenly switch it to the other one so it helps in easing that problem uh, we call it deadlock it helps prevent that and uh, key functions of the kernel are basically process management memory allocation and dealing with the system call or the you know demands of the user through operating system 
and the major uh, role is the security role as uh, it uh, acts as the uh, first barrier uh, which uh, uh, protects system resources and data integrity. It is the first barrier when uh, a user is using uh, the OS. It deals with, uh, you know, the, uh, the most end uh, of a system, like the thin line gap between the software and hardware part, the connectivity. It is the first line of defense, which we can say in the security scenario. So moving forward, uh, we'll move to the part of threats to the kernel. Why uh, why we need uh, security patches from time, uh, time to time? So basically, uh, kernels, uh, especially in case of Linux operating system, uh, like uh, which we'll be focusing uh, today. So they are uh, more, uh, uh, you know, more threats uh, are coming to that, like uh, buffer overflow attacks, which uh, I'm discussing uh, currently. Like uh, in that buffer overflow, uh, poor validation uh, is, uh, you know, inputs are used for exploiting to get arbitrary results. And uh, then moving forward, we have uh, one more uh, issue, which is privilege escalation. Like uh, in most cases, uh, major uh, worms or malwares are used to uh, access the visudo file sudo visudo visudo files are the major target of uh, the infiltrators if they uh, try to uh, you know gain access to your system unauthorized access to your system basically uh, they use uh, uh, worms malwares or in in this case which i have mentioned manipulating bugs to get higher access uh, rights uh, then they are uh, currently given. They basically uh, use the pseudo privilege and their major target is the pseudo file which uh, carries the uh, the uh, uh, high uh, higher access uh, profiles or the code uh, softwares uh, uh, which uh, the, the passwords which are stored for uh, you know admin access they targeted. And uh, the third which uh, I would like to discuss is uh, rootkits, the threat uh, because of rootkits. Rootkits are basically the software uh, uh, that, uh, uh, you know, pieces of code that uh, sits inside the system and are very hard to identify and uh, detect. Basically, uh, rootkits uh, uh, work as uh, spreaded uh, inside any system code. They will, they become so malleable and uh, they become so, you know, Mm. so uh, merge with uh, main source code that it is high, highly difficult to identify where the rootkit has been placed in the whole source code. And it uh, behaves like the source only, but it, it can be programmed for uh, like malicious purposes. So, so that's uh, what... Uh, it's discussed in uh, the third point, basically, uh, it, it enables uh, continued privilege access to computer by hiding its present. It, uh, it is very difficult to identify root kit. And uh, these three are only uh, the points which I have mentioned. There are many more to, many more to add. And kernels, uh, basically, in the system or server which, uh, use, uh, which we use, and uh, mostly 90, uh, 90 to 95% uh, of the systems uh, rely in, in data center or anywhere rely on Linux servers, uh, Linux servers only. And uh, other operating system based servers are less as compared to Linux. And the major part of that uh, is the kernel. And uh, so these are the threats uh, and uh, if you uh, if you would go through the news, the dirty cow uh, vulnerability was the most recent thing that affected many Linux system, which uh, utilized uh, basically privilege privilege escalation through rootkits. Rootkit uh, are mostly uh, uh, nowadays the security patches which are coming uh, in Linux. Uh, they are basically targeting the rootkits only. That's why uh, we have to see the updates every time like uh, we go through our servers and there is a uh, you know uh, 
like in the documentation we get a prompt like uh, a new version has come then we have to uh, manually update our servers that's because uh, of the evolving cyber threats and their mitigation which uh, continues almost every day so with this uh, i would like to move ahead to the solution part like uh, in the topic uh, we are uh, basically targeting open source for the solution of this problem. So why open source? The question arises. Why we are uh, more, uh, you know, more uh, relying on the open source uh, for uh, mitigating this problem. So one of the many reasons is uh, auditability. So uh, open source software, uh, as we know, is not uh, code locked or something. It can be uh, accessed by anyone uh, and that increases the uh, uh, auditability of the system as open source so software can be audited by any developer. And uh, suppose someone, uh, the major developer of the project misses some part and uh, if uh, he has some problems or uh, the system has some problems basically which are overlooked by other developers, there must be someone uh, while going through the code can mitigate uh, some issue or, uh, you know, at max give uh, uh, this, uh, give some uh, positive uh, pull request uh, or a modification to the code, which can further enhance uh, trust and security of the system. Then we move forward to rapid patching. So with a community driven, up, uh, driven approach, the identification and fixing of bugs become really fast. Like uh, uh, if someone uh, is uh, programming, uh, has programmed a system, uh, source code has been made available and people around the globe are, uh, you know, approaching that open source code. And uh, while some, uh, like I discussed in the previous point, while some uh, someone may have missed something, the other person, uh, must uh, mitigate and uh, due to the community uh, driven approach uh, that uh, as many people uh, are uh, working or uh, having access to the same code the identification and fixing of the problems or in uh, computer language we call bugs uh, becomes uh, uh, what we can say uh, accelerated and basically the identification part is accelerated and then uh, moved forward to a group of people or a single one also mitigating it. But identification is important, the most important part uh, to look for, uh, forward. Then uh, we, we have transparency. Open source processes are basically, uh, 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 you know, uh, accessible to anyone and uh, people who are developing and also the ones uh, who are finding some bugs or problems in that they can uh, directly see the, you know, uh, work done by others and uh, that uh, basically creates an understanding uh, that leads to the mitigation of security flaws more effectively as many people uh, are connected to each other and working on the project that uh, enhances, uh, you know, the outcome for uh, getting a solution as apart from a closed source project. So this that's why uh, open source is considered as the best uh, solution for uh, this. Our major focus, uh, we are keeping on open source because of the benefits of a community working together. And moving forward, we have uh, now uh, in this, we'll discuss the mechanisms of dynamic defense, like how uh, uh, in in the introduction also, which I discussed on the real time, how we can, you know, uh, work and uh, give updates or patch to the system. So basically, as discussed, live patching is the most, uh, you know, uh, good thing about this project uh, because live patching uh, gives the benefit of, uh, you know, uh, not uh, having a downtime, which basically 
it uh, we can say uh, help in uh, delivering uh, the things timely and also uh, it will uh, not interrupt the general functioning of uh, like for example a system is running with uh, a linux uh, background uh, back uh, back end basically so it will help uh, in not uh, keeping the users like front end uh, users are not uh, basically uh, uh, given uh, uh, you know uh, downtime like uh, in in this uh, point one uh, we have we have the case of critical infrastructures like uh, telesurgery and many other infrastructure like uh, you know jet engine functioning aeronautics and all in those the data which is which has been transmitted above uh, over the servers they this will cause a benefit in that cases where even a minute of downtime can cause a huge problem so updates and all security patches can be given to the kernel at the same time while it is working and another benefit which uh, we can uh, you know uh, rip out of it is uh, behavioral monitoring uh, this part basically utilizes the ai and uh, it detects uh, patterns pattern recognition ai and whenever an unusual activity uh, is detected like uh, a surge in uh, request botnets or something or maybe some uh, rootkits or some kind of malware in the system it will immediately report back to you know the uh, attached uh, users uh, user or the system admin and with ai uh, especially the liquid neural networks uh, uh, we can uh, go for automated response like uh, system can automatically isolate or issue uh, or fix the issue like uh, with ai we can uh, train the system for some some kind of uh, uh, with some kind of uh, predefined data set of the flaws and kind of attacks which can happen and with liquid neural network, apart from the data set, we can also focus on uh, the real time training. Uh, so that if some new kind of, uh, you know, attack come, they can uh, basically the new, uh, AI can detect uh, from the pattern and also form some uh, new combinations like to detect some uh, new kind of uh, malware or some new kind of attack and thought the uh, basically uh, help in miti uh, mitigate the you know uh, the bugs and all uh, so this was the part of automated response and uh, basically the mechanism of this dynamic defense which we have proposed and now we'll move to the part of implementing uh, runtime security measures so basically EB, uh, BPF and KRSI, these are the two tools uh, which I personally like. Uh, they help uh, for creation of, uh, you know, flexible and dynamic security policies at the main runtime only. There is no need to, you know, put a system down and then give uh, updates or patches to it. They can be used, these two uh, tools or basically uh, architecture, that would be the better word, uh, can be used to uh, to create the most flexible and dynamic security policies for the runtime and uh, for implementing uh, things at the most uh, uh, you know running level and uh, we need a continu uh, continuous monitoring for uh, especially for detecting uh, anomalies and ensuring system integrity while we are uh, developing some security policy and putting it uh, on the uh, you know running system we have to continuously monitor the effects and the uh, basically the efficiency of the you know al algorithm or the uh, major uh, update or patch which we are putting so for uh, uh, monitoring also we have uh, artificial intelligence based solutions but uh, system admin uh, 
uh, also has uh, you know the access to, uh, while running uh, while the system is running uh, he has the access to update and uh, basically he can monitor uh, for uh, detecting uh, anomalies at the time when the patch has been uploaded like uh, that that, uh, that time the system is the most vulnerable and uh, then we have forensic capabilities also logging and analysis tool like uh, uh, for example uh, uh, linux based tools like uh, wireshark and uh, wireshark and all can be used to analyze the networks uh, or uh, you know base, basically the packet flow after an security incident occurs and uh, analysis tools are also available to understand the nature of the attack and basically uh, mitigate uh, other uh, similar types of attacks after a breach has happened and to uh, minimize the data loss in a breach basically uh, with uh, uh, you know the analysis we can uh, we can also it also gives a uh, benefit to our ai model also uh, with the uh, uh, with uh, the data which uh, the analysis analysis tools give back, they can be uh, used to train the AI model for more further strengthening of the networks, uh, neural networks, and to mitigate and uh, basically uh, detect and uh, you know block such request or th that kind of malicious code. Uh, and uh, like uh, give feedback about that to the sysadmin immediately. So forensic capabilities and push bridge analysis tools also help uh, in, uh, you know, giving a major uh, feedback and also uh, mitigate further kind of attacks if a breach happens. So with uh, every uh, integration, uh, like uh, Aquin has two sides, challenges are also there. We can't, uh, you know, completely ignore them. And in this uh, section, we are going to discuss that only uh, challenges and solutions uh, for that. So basically, uh, the first challenge which we are going to face is the deployment complexity. Uh, complexity. Mm. Like uh, if uh, uh, while while a system is already running and major applications, uh, you know, going on. Uh, on it basically uh, it uh, 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 you know deploying some algorithms uh, while a system is serving some purpose it can uh, be uh, complex and it may be problematic in some case if uh, there is some kind of data loss or uh, in any way the system is hampered or it suddenly crashes or goes for uh, a certain reboot then maybe the application or the front end users which are using it or the or uh, in case of a critical infrastructure it can be very fatal like in the healthcare sector and all where data is uh, con uh, continuously been monitored and all so that's the deployment complexity uh, complexity we have to figure out uh, ways through which we can uh, deploy the system without uh, you know, compromising the usability of the system and uh, majorly in the cases of critical infrastructure as I discussed uh, earlier. So, and another thing uh, which, uh, another integration challenge uh, which we face is compatibility. Like uh, uh, if you're giving a security patch to some uh, version of a kernel, then uh, it may happen that uh, there will be uh, clash with uh, you know the system or hardware or something that is the most major part uh, we have to ensure that all things are aligned properly before uh, you know touching anything on the runtime because it may hamper uh, the productivity of the uh, applications which are relying on that server so the major focus should uh, are to maintain the system stability while we are, uh, you know, putting forward that patch and update and checking the compatibility with the existing application. Suppose we give a patch or something to the 
kernel while running uh, uh, while the you know server or the uh, Linux box to precise is running some uh, application or serving uh, to some you know let's take the example of healthcare sector so if uh, it is serving a telesurgery which is uh, going on and then suddenly which uh, we are updating the system with a security patch on the runtime then it may happen like the end uh, end user or the end uh, uh, connection may hamper or the stability basically the system stability because latency and all depends on the compatibility and smooth functioning of uh, the box which is uh, transmitting the data or the server in our case so it is uh, a very crucial part to ensure compatibility and then uh, the major important part is training and adaptation basically before uh, running into any uh, of the works or you know, something you have to go through a rigorous training uh, and basically letting your employees or people who are using uh, the service or who, who are going to work on it know about uh, the potential uh, problems which it can cause and the uh, you know ways uh, ways to mitigate those uh, problems or issues which can arise from that so educating team members uh, is a very uh, necessary and important part to how how they, they are going to implement the security protocols or patches or what uh, or uh, updates which uh, we are giving to the system especially the sys admins and the admin people they need to know how to implement properly and manage the tools uh, uh, for the security case. So further going on, uh, we have uh, future directions and community involvement. So basically we uh, for future direction, we have AI in security. Like uh, I discussed, uh, artificial intelligence can be used, uh, you know, to predict and uh, mitigate any further uh, incoming attacks or uh, to find uh, malicious pieces of code or the uh, you know on uh, to block unauthorized access and all so basically machine learning uh, is used to predict and prevent attacks uh, even before they happen or uh, if a breach happens then post breach uh, basically machine learning is uh, you know used to uh, uh, it, the machine learning model is fitted with the data to prevent further uh, uh, hampering of the system uh, through attacks of same kind or in case of federated learning, uh, you know, uh, related kind of attacks are also prevented by training the model. And for community involvement, we can uh, we need to pursue more community projects such as uh, to encourage participation in projects like uh, the Linux kernel security subsystem like basically uh, the uh, like uh, i said a good thing of uh, open source is that the uh, source code is available for people uh, and they, they can usually use uh, you know they can, they can basically uh, anyone can modify uh, the thing if they can uh, if they see any kind of error or any kind of problem in the code which may have been overlooked as i discussed earlier also so that's the major importance of community projects and then uh, we'll go to the importance of contributions like like as discussed the more number of people uh, participating and reviewing the code and uh, you know research uh, researching very uh, efficiently and reviewing uh, each and every part. So if uh, the developer or some other person who have added something to the code has missed some part, then due to this huge uh, open source community uh, and the people who are going to review it and the contributions which uh, come uh, you know, continuously help in uh, making a more secure uh, code and continuously uh, they help in enhancing the security of the model. And with this, uh, I would like to go to the conclusion and I would like to 
you know present some resources which uh, uh, can uh, you know beginners or for anyone interested in the kernel sector or the security sector can uh, go through that for so basically uh, the thing uh, the thing is uh, we can uh, through throughout this session we have uh, uh, discussed the open source uh, solution and the benefits of open source solution to embrace the uh, uh, defense uh, system on uh, uh, of a uh, kernel basically on uh, on the runtime and uh, while it is serving the processes so in conclusion i would like to add like uh, this uh, uh, systems which which are proposed are very helpful for the you know proper functioning of a box especially at uh, runtime so now I would like to uh, give our present a resource uh, for uh, learning, like uh, for people likely who are interested to get into the kernel development and the security side can uh, go through Linux kernel development. Uh, that's a book by Robert Love. And online resources, you can consider OWASP and uh, also uh, mylinux.org to, you know, learn about the development, uh, most probably the security developments in the kernel sector. And then uh, I would like to, uh, you know, go to the Q&A session. So if you have any question, please, uh, you know. Sure. Um, I don't know if you can hear me or not, can you? Yeah, yeah I can hear. Um, <clears throat> so, Linux isn't necessarily my space. I'm, I'm curious about how in Linux you can determine if you have a rootkit. Um, rootkits basically entered our knowledge through uh, Sony Records about ten years ago, and there, yeah. if you put a Sony Music CD in your in your computer, you got a rootkit so that they can protect you from stop you from copying uh, uh, music, and. That's that's when the world first learned of it, and they are so embedded in the operating system that any tool that you use to look for them, they they cloak themselves. And I know how Windows figures it. I was wondering what strategy Linux uses so a user can determine if there's a rootkit on your machine. So basically, uh, uh, that's what. Uh... Uh, uh, that's why we get the, uh, uh, you know, security patches and, uh, uh, you know, uh, updates uh, constantly for uh, our kernel, like uh, every day, every day or two, you can get uh, an update for your security system uh, or operating system to be precise. But uh, like, uh, like you asked for, uh, you know, searching uh, uh, when the rootkit is uh, very uh, uh, good at hiding itself there are many ai tools which are available which uh, helps us to you know especially uh, define the code like they basically target the source code and then uh, they find the uh, anomalies in that basically they are trained on a uh, huge amount of data uh, a vast data set of uh, you know especially the rootkits or what kind uh, they have or how they, uh, you know, embed in the system. So basically uh, in this uh, process for, especially for the dynamic, uh, which I was discussing dynamic kernel. So we have to uh, uh, heavily rely on AI and especially liquid neural networks, which uh, will utilize the data, which uh, it has got from the training and also live learning. If some new kind of, uh, anomaly is detected post breach or pre breach also it can help to identify the you know sitting it may be a uh, sitting thing it may be a wall uh, uh, worm a malware or uh, in in our case which we are discussing a rootkit yeah they're just really heavily cloaked i know on windows they would actually install a perfectly well formed file system filter driver and so if you were even doing queries of what's on your disk they would ignore themselves. And if you went into the registry and registry editor and try to find the rootkit, it would hide itself. Are any security 
programs able to sniff out new malicious software or it's, or it's just so it's just taking libraries and comparing it right well if, if you did that on running system though a good rootkit will hide the comparisons well that's what i'm asking like and so even ai sniff out new malicious software is it just going off libraries so so the guy that caught it on sony's game is mark Rusevich. in my world he did system journals a long time ago and what they did is they what his solution was is he boots the system under a, a clean os and then loads the file system from the infected machine and made a copy of it. And then he booted from the infected machine and then did compare. And that's how he was able to find it. I remember when that happened, I'm big in the music world. Like, uh, so I, I remember yeah. when Sony put out those uh, anti piracy yeah. programs. Yeah. It was a pretty big bus. <laughs> so, uh, so big, uh... Lastly, th thank you for your talk. Um, I appreciate you joining us. But um, yeah. I, I, I think just saying AI will take care of it. I, I think rootkits, AI is going to use the same tools humans use, and rootkits are going to cloak them too. <laughs> so I, I, hopefully, the Linux world, they probably, someone there probably already has a strategy, but um, um, it, it's an interesting topic. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I have a question. I'll hop, hop out. Um, is there any? Uh, you you mentioned you're a student there. Um, the 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 process that you 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 use in your programs to kind of uh, threat model, uh, test out. Do you do any like? I know I know uh, that there's sometimes like uh, capture the flag. Um, uh, kind of hacking tournaments. What what's the what's the environment and and the learning process like for you? Uh, in your in your program to to approach like uh, getting ahead of this uh, this topic. So uh, uh, basically, uh, 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 we are uh, like uh, in in my university or in my case, if you are discussing, then basically uh, we are uh, relying on making uh, cybersecurity. Uh, models which are basically trained by liquid neural networks. It, uh, it, like I discussed in the presentation earlier also, liquid neural networks are the most, uh, you know, advanced kind of uh, neural network uh, coming up and it is still under research, but, uh, it, uh, but it can help in identifying more, uh, you know, uh, segregate more uh, deeply because of the tendency to lie blur. Basically, even if the model, uh, like we say, uh, is on, uh, you know, uh, standby also, it can uh, clearly detect uh, the things which are going on and it keeps on learning like our human brain. Even if uh, something is not uh, happening, uh, like from our field, brain is still uh, continuously processing the data. And if someday we uh, match uh, with that same event or uh, something related to that uh, comes, then we can easily recall that, oh, I have seen this uh, uh, thing and this were the uh, causes and this was the solution for that event. I'm just giving an example. So basically, we are developing that kind of AI models which are uh, helping to mitigate uh, this kind of thing. So we have reached an accuracy of 56% as of now, and it is a cloud-based model which we are working. I hope that answers or... Yeah, yeah, it helps. What school is this? Yeah, can you share which uh, which school you're at? I know you're coming from Kolkata. I yeah, actually, I'm from Kolkata, India, and the university is MIT University. Oh, 